Hello everyone and welcome to, I don't know, this, has, this doesn't have a title. <laughs> yes, uh, welcome to a wine unboxing. We have wine. Hi. And we have other cat here. Sorry that the, we, the camera's going to be a little bit focused. I should bring the chat over so I don't have the chat. But, um, ooh, come here chat. Uh, but pretty much we have a, um, we have some uh, wine from NPR. Uh, so, in case you don't know, NPR does like a wine club thing, and I also drink wine along with lots of beer. So, this is uh, our first shipment of wine, and uh, Emma's displaying it so well. <laughs> so, this first ba batch of wine, and I figured we could just open it together, and then uh, probably just pick out um, pick out one for for today for wine of the week rather than beer of the week, because because why not, right? Why not? Why not? Oh no. Oh no. Hey, you like puns. I do like puns, but they shouldn't be contagious. Like, I'm the only one who's allowed to make them. Alright, uh. Box. Oh, Odds is also gonna get in on the action. Hello, buddy. Hey, buddy. Alright, set up real quick. Oh! Hold on. I'm gonna try not to. not to dox myself too much here, but we'll see. Wow! Wow! So there's it things. There's things and, and stuff. Other stuff. Wow. Hobbs already wa oh, Hobbs already wants to make it inside the box. Yeah, we'll let you inside the box when we're done, but I'll be right to wait. No. Not gonna wait. He already <laughs> wants in. Oh goodness. Um. Uh, why sounds weird? Cause NPR is on average pretty good in knowing that they talk about. Yeah. The music's pretty loud. I can turn down the music, guys. I can do that. So yeah, so we have. Oh, I have, yeah. You can't hear it, but it's there. So ambient noise. <laughs> I'll get microphone out of the way. All right. So we have. Yeah, it comes with this. Welcome to the club. This is a big letter. Look at this. I really go all out for welcome. Raise a glass to public radio. Yay! Fun your public radio, especially if you live in the U.S. Because um, they do good stuff. So. Yeah, fun times. Cool beans. This is from Lef Leith Lethwaite wine. What is it? I don't know. I don't. I can't. I can't that word. Leithwaite. Lethwaite wine. Okay. I don't know. I'm probably butchering it. All right. So um, our first shipment, I think, has fifteen oh. wines. Oh, hey, honey, look! Like, with all these cards for all the different wines. Cool beans. We're going to find them then. Well, awesome. Now I actually know what to talk about when we open box. Holy cow. That's a lot of wines. A... Oh, my God. That's a lot okay, of wines. Okay, I, I need to take a picture of this before we do this. <laughs> this is a lot of wines. Goodness gracious. Oh. <laughs> um, that is, it, is a, it is a crap ton of wine. Um, so it's 15 bottles, I think, in this, in this first shipment. This is the most wine we've ever had in this apartment. Yeah. I think our record was eight. We, we also have, like, no storage for this, which is going to be amazing. No, that's going to be fun. <laughs> Sorry, we gotta get, we gotta get an Instagram picture of, because my wife needs to do that. Because I do that. It's okay. I take pictures of everything to post on, post on Twitter, so. That's fine. I can put them. Oh my goodness. Oh we have an goodness. audience waiting on the edge of their oh, seats, wanting us to, to open these wines. We're going to open them all today, too. It's not just like taking them out of the box. We're going to open and drink them all today. That's the plan. Yeah, you'll know all 15 bottles. Tomorrow. Okay, we're going to start with the crappy ones and start with the white ones. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of white ones. Where are the cards? Oh. So, first one out of the box is a... God, that's a terrible... There we go. It's a Pinot Grigio. 
So if you don't know anything about wines, white wines suck, so don't drink them. It's fine. Oh. Um, where are you from? Italy. Is this the same one? Yeah. Italian wine. Oh, look at that. Here, if you're going to read things, you should read things. Cavascovo. You should read things into my thoughts. All right. Scovo. Who said I was reading it, though? I mean, you're reading it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that as, as yeah. Huh. Wow, that is nice. You gotta, you gotta read the card, though. Why don't you read it? Oh, my God. I am not a reader. Um, neither am I. There are a few more refreshing whites than Pinot Grigio. Northern Italy is its, is its heartland. That's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> um, and this fresh favorite hails from a family estate, shown on the label, that was previously home to a, Benedict, a Benedictian nunnery. Ooh. And the Baron Economo. Uh, of Trias Long. Sunny days and cooling sea breezes ensure the grapes are packed with crisp, ripe flavors. Get ready for a vibrant lemon and apple notes with classic almond tang on the finish. Hand dinner party, guess a glass, and start the evening off right. All right, that's a lot of words. In case you don't know, if you want to be a wine snob, just pick pick words that don't go with wine and just say them, and um, I promise you that everyone's just going to nod away and agree with you on, like, flavors, so... Just, just pick a wine and be like, yeah, this tastes like apricots. And and 90% of the time people be like, yeah, yeah, I can. I see a hint of apricot in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes it's true, but, you know, you know, a broken clock is, what, what is the saying? I'm terrible at this. A broken clock is right twice in one day. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, even a broken clock is twice, is, is right twice a day. Um, yeah, but no, yeah, just pretend, just pretend, uh, wine tasting is all about pretend confidence. It's all about pretending to know what you're talking about, and that's it. Okay. I actually get two of these. Are they the same one? Oh, they are the same, same one. one. Oh, well, I feel like, I feel like, like I've it. ripped off, because now I have two oh. of these Pinot Gris. I was hoping for, for different ones. Oh, well. well. That's okay. It's white wine. It'll get not drank. Uh, the next white is Palacio de Menade. It's from... Somewhere. Can you find Spain? It's a Spanish one. Can you Ooh, find the card for that one? Spanish wine. Two. It's a Spanish white wine. Um, does the case contain 12 bottles or 15 bottles? It should be 15. One, two, three, four, 15. five. Yeah, it's three rows of five. So it's 15 bottles of wine. Um, hello, Luke. How are you? Um, no, worries. we'll have a regular show in, in a little bit. Um, um, as well, just this is just for funsies before it all starts. <laughs> so, uh, the angle's a bit weird, and I can see a few of the tops. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I'm trying to, fortunately, the way the camera's set up, it's hard for me. I'm gonna try to try to maybe scoot the camera a little bit forward without. Should be able to point it down a little bit more now. Maybe. Hopefully that's a better angle for you all. But Alright, so this one is the uh from Spain. Uh and the the card says Palacio de Menade has a fine, cool vibrancy that will appeal to those who relish Sansera. Sansari? Sansera, I think. Sansera. Writes the Guardian. Oh, the Guardian reviewed this one. Um, uh, the 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 lip smacking white was made by our the local Rueda star Ricardo Sanz. Mm -hmm. Man, can't give me an English wine. Uh, and previous vintages have been rated excellent value by Robert Parker himself. Made from Verdejo, the region's pride and joy grape, the Sauvignon Blanc is definitely a refreshing alternative to pure Sauvignons from France or California. Perfumed with smoked salmon sandwiches, seared scallops, seafood pasta, and more. It's a seafood wine. Mm, we love seafood. We do like seafood. So it's a commune Sauvignon Blanc. And we got two of those too, because why not? All right. All right, now we got the crappy wines out of the way. Nope, we have another crappy wine. 
Um, another seven young vlog. Stonewall from New Zealand. Ooh. Stonewall, I think I heard about that one. Yeah. New Zealand does make some pretty good wines. We actually have a friend who's been um, traveling around the world going to, um, to wineries. She was like, she just got back from a year in Australia, New Zealand. Like she did, she did both, um, which was pretty fun. And she's been kind of studying to be a vintner of some class. All right, I'll let you hold that. Uh, this one's from New Zealand. Uh, Francis and Sarah may be Sauvignon's spiritual home, but our modern vibrancy... God, vibrancy is a big word in, in wine, apparently. Um, Melbourne is the place to head, and nobody does it better than the pioneering Dr. John Forrest. A purist vintage of his stone wall scooped a coveted gold medal in China and silver outstanding from the International Wine and Spirit Competition. Aromas of passion fruit, gooseberry, cut grass... <laughs> Cut grass and mineral. Excellent precision and poise. Here is the 2018 release, complete with the same intensity of flavor. I'm not sure that I really would like cut grass in my wine. Well, it's going to taste like it or smell like it, I guess. The essence of it. Es the know. essence of wine. Oh, God. Yeah, 11 bottles of us. We're getting there. <laughs> um, so is this Civil War wine or LGBTQ plus wine? I don't know. This is, getting, this is getting close to like what end game levels of wine. What are you talking about? Because there's a lot of wine. Oh. And a lot of letters. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> is this another white one? Nope. I think that might be all the white wines. Okay. Oh, no. One more. Ooh, finally, something that comes from a good part of the world. Um, we have a Rich Ridge Riders uh, Chardonnay from the Central Coast. California wine. California wines are always, um, always a win. I gotta, I gotta actually show the label because I didn't because I was looking at it. Um, recent superb vintages have set, uh, sent quality in California through the root through the roof, and we're thrilled to bring you the latest release of this lush orchid fruited Chardonnay. It's delicious, collaborating between the Miller family and their talented winemaker Richard Shelton. Richard sorts the grapes from uh, sustainably farmed Central Coast sites with a focus on premium San Luis Obispo, yay, where we live nearish, that area, uh, and harvested the, or lived near that area, we don't anymore, uh, and harvested the Chardonnay in the cool of night to retain freshness. Really? You guys harvest the grapes at night? That's weird. Uh, in the cellar, barrel fermentation, a quality technique used in the production of many world-class whites, um, like this, adds a ripe, round mouthfeel. Mm, mouthfeel. <laughs> Contrapoints joke. Um, and toasty vanilla characters to the final wine. A top choice for your next wine and cheese party. I need cheese party. Chardonnays are always... I don't know. We had we had once, we had a, a Chardonnay that was... Um, uh, it was aged in um, uh, steel barrels, uh, stainless steel barrels, and it mm -hmm. tasted like blood. It was awful. It was all metallically and gross. That was the first time I ever poured a wine out at a taste. Yeah. So I think so, it's the only one, only time too. Oh, so I got Chardonnays can be good. Hopefully this is a good one. It's from California. It shouldn't be too bad. All right, I think that's now. I think we we've done all the whites, and I think we can move on to Before the we continue, reds. Continue. I just want to say that these cards are pretty useful. You know, they have the description for the wines and the regions on the front, but on the back, they actually have this um, description for what you can serve the wine with and how to store it what kind of foods you should definitely pair it with that's actually kind of neat hmm. you know especially for people who don't really know what kind of wine to pick for a certain event you know not that we have that problem. like us uh, we have that problem a lot <laughs> do we? i don't know what I to thought, do i thought we were getting pretty good at that yeah, if you say so we're having barbacoa beef i think we should get them all back with it all right well i thought we were getting pretty good at that but oh well all right, let's pick a red to pull. Let's start with this one. Oh, huh? It's punny. What? It's a pun. Well, oh, not no. punny. It's a. It's, it's, oh. It's a reference to to NPR itself. This is an NPR wine. This is kind of well, cool. Well, that's the name of their show, hun. All grapes considered. Yeah, this is all grapes considered. That's the name of their show, isn't no. it? No. Yes, it is. No. Yes, it is. I mean, it's something considered, but it's not all grapes considered. It's a. Uh... What is it? Oh, now I forget. What is Shoot, it? Shoot, NPR. What's NPR's show's name? I have to look it up now. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh. I did a thing, honey, by accident. 
Hey, honey. Huh? Sweetie, I did a thing by accident. You I did do something. a thing. Why are you, you clicking? It? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're getting too excited. I didn't know there was a button on the side of your mouse. Why is there a button on the side of your mouse? Because. All things considered. That's the name of the show. All for things. For the wine? No. Yeah. But no. I mean, for the, the NPR. Wine? Do they? Yes. That's how we heard about this. Is th that's how we heard okay. about the whole wine club. If you think so. Okay. Is sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Fine. Can someone please Google this for us? Because this might, this might ruin our marriage. This is from we, California. <laughs> This one's from Ca Oakland, California, or not Oakland, sorry, Oakville, California. I have no idea what the hell that is. Um, do you have a, is there a card for this one? I don't yeah. have to read the label. So we have All Grapes Considered by NPR. Is it a red wine? An all red wine? Or, I mean, yeah, it's uh, red. Um, what, are, what am I saying? A red blend? Uh, no, it's a Pinot Noir. Oh. I just think that would be also funny. Yes, it would, actually. It should be a red blend. Uh, Northern California, it looks like. Uh, second release in our All Grapes Considered series, the fine California Pinot Noir, comes courtesy of charismatic Frenchman Jean Jean Charles Boisset. Boisse. I don't know. What did you say? Uh, born in the historic wine village of, God, you French people, uh, Bouguet Burgundy, aka, aka the epicenter of great Pinot Noir. Jean Charles takes on more exuberant personality under sunny California skies, not unlike his favorite grape variety. With a little help from Mother Nature and the excellent 2017 vintage, Gene Charles and his team have produced a velvety Pinot Noir that overflows with ripe red fruit and subtle spice characters. Mm. Mm. Fun time. That one might be might be the choice for me. Uh, Google says all things considered. Google says oh, really? all things considered. Oh, I thought it was their own segment, All Grapes Considered. No. Oh. All things considered, and this is their wine from it. Yeah. Wow. See, Google doesn't lie. You're right. Google, loves Google me. doesn't lie. Uh, ooh, Google. a Primitivo Weekend Edition. That's also funny because that's also another one of their shows. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to NPR enough. Uh -huh. Is there a card for this one? Yeah. All right. This is a Primitivo from Illinois? Italy. Italy. Okay, Italy. Italy. Look, it has the thing. Oh. It's in the heel of the boot. Is that what that is? Oh, that's a boot. You think it, you didn't know that Italy looked like a boot? No. It never occurred to you? No. No one ever told you that? No. It's a boot, honey. Apparently. And, and it's a boot tripping over a rock, which is Sicily. I think that's Sicily. Apparently. <laughs> this is news to me. Okay. I did not know that Italy looked like a boot. Tripping over a rock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. Um, we have uh, Primitivo from Italy. Welcome to Pug... Clea? Puglia? The sun-drenched heels of Italy's boot. Ha! Huh? They say it there. Uh, where, yes. you'll, <laughs> where you'll find an ancient vine. Um, characterful... That is not a real word. Characterful reds. That's a. That's not a real word. Characterful? That's not a, that's not a real word. Can't be I mean, a real it's word. It's from NPR. It must be a real word. Uh, they're, they're very well researched. I guess. <laughs> and Cantine du Palms. The inspiration cooperates of a small holder grape growers behind this luscious red. Named after the popular NPR series, Weekend Edition, showcases Puglia Star Red Primitivo, a.k.a. Zinfandel in California. Is it really? Is the Primitivo just in a Zinfandel? Mm-hmm. Oh. With its chocolatey black fruit flavors, it'll be a welcome addition to long, lazy Saturday dinner. Um, see over for our favorite food pairing. All right. What does it pair with? Um, pasta, beef, and it looks like some sort of uh, roasted vegetable eggplant parmesan. Ooh. Eggplant parmesan. Eggplants are weird. I'm not sure how I feel about eggplants. They are weird, but they're quite versatile. Yeah. Uh... On the NPR Club website, it looks like it's the second NPR wine weekend edition, longest neck red wine bottle. Um, and the four wines are included with two bottles, and uh, the other seven are singles. Oh, that's neat. Okay. Uh, EMBD, Cabernet Sauvignon, Culver City Cuvée? Cuvée? Cuvée. 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 Okay. No, not Q. Cu Cuvée. That's what I said. Cube. I thought I heard you say cube. It's definitely cubed now. <laughs> uh, embedded Cabernet Sauvignon. 
Oh, I, I see. So it yeah. says it says E M B embedded. 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 Yeah, I see. And uh, you guys are so funny, NPR. I love you. Um, all right, let's see what this one has to say. Uh, NPR's embedded podcast. I never heard this podcast before. Hosted by Kelly McEvers, um, dives deep into news stories. Few wines offer more depth and complexity than Cab than California Cabernet. Ooh. And that's exactly why we gave this one our exclusive embedded label. It was crafted by talented winemaker and avid Q, uh, KQED listener, uh, Doug Roosevelt, who has a great story in his own right. Uh, Doug quit his competitive sales job to enroll in the UC Davis wine program and pursues his dream, um, bursting with ripe fig cassis? Cases? Cases? What's a cases? Cassis? I think it's Cassis. Cassis? I think you're right. Cassis. Uh, in smooth chocolate notes, it's fine tribute to Doug's passion and this groundbreaking podcast. Well, now I'm going to have to go listen to your podcast. Neat. So where is it from again? California. It's from California. Yeah. Northern California. And what do you pair with it? Uh, cheese beef. What? A cheese beef? Cheese like a beef. cheeseburger? No, no. Cheese and beef. Cheese and beef. Okay, yeah. but I bet a cheeseburger works well. I bet so, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, artisan cheese. Enjoy this company with English cheddar, Stilton, and other firm age varieties. It is also a delight with beef dishes from barbecue classics like steak or ribs to winter favorites such as pot roast or beef stew. Mm. Vegetarians, too bad for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to drink it. Uh, uh, half of the uh, Empire's wine club uh, is shipping. Uh, so this one was... Um, am I, do I have to um, this cost us... Uh, eighty dollars for the first one, and then twenty dollars shipping. So I mean, it was twenty dollars for shipping. But... And it was supposed to be for twelve, but we got three as yeah. a bonus. I don't know if that's for every, every month. Yeah. Or every quarter. Mm hmm. So, we'll see. I think I think it's every quarter that's it, and I think it might go up after that. I think for the next ones, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, Al Ria Vino Regional Aga Agave. Jesus. Oh my gosh. Our doorbell ring. Do we have a package coming? Do we? Oh, we might have a package coming. I might have to delay you. Oh, I'll keep. I'll keep talking here while my wife goes checks the door. Um, from Portugal. So that's fun. Um, I don't really know too much about Portuguese wines, uh, besides ports. I know ports. That's about it. And, um, and I'm gonna have to. I have to do all the work myself now. Doorbell ring. We got a system. The system is broken now. I'm not coping well with this lack of system. Do -do. We're an Amazon delivery, but for somebody else. That's not for us. No. Oh, that's lame. They never came to our door. They just expect me to open it. Bunch of jerks. <laughs> um, okay, so this is from Argentina. Uh, one, spectator, one spectator recently mused that the Portugal may be the most exciting wine place on the planet, and its southern enclave of Algarve... Uh, is our pick for the country's most exciting region. We think you'll agree after a sip of our hugely acclaimed red, uh, named for the vineyard's proximity to the ocean, shown below, Al Ria, was crafted uh, by the talented Diego Supelveda, a powerful blend of uh, Toriga Nacional, Portugal's number one red grape and the star of, of port, and the spicy Syrah. It overflows with intense black fruit flavor. Ooh, it's a blend. Syrah and port. Nice. Yeah, well, that's kind of fun. What does it pair with? It goes well with uh, chicken, barbecue stews. Uh, barbecue. If I, yeah. Uh, if you happen to be enjoying Aria in the seaside, pair with beach barbecue favorites like burgers, spicy sausage, or veggies, veggie kebabs. So. Mm. Barbecue. Sounds like a great summer wine for yeah. picnics and such. <laughs> Uh, how can you stumble so badly over <laughs> Iberian words? Don't you grow up? Didn't you grow up bilingual? I can't read. <laughs> oh, it's the same oh, one. We, we get, get to the second one of that one. Right, more barbecue. More barbecue. Mm -hmm. More reason to barbecue. Okay. So so far we're at how many wines? I'm going through quite. Four. We have four left, so there's eleven over there. Okay. Uh, we have another Primitiva by Puglia. Uh, Indicaciones geográfica. Oh, God. It's, I'm guessing it's Italian because I can't read this thing. Um, but yeah, it's a red blend, I think. Pilastro Primitivo. Oh, there we go. 
My wife is way better. I don't know why she doesn't want to read, because I can't read. Uh, Italian. Because I'm shy. <laughs> Uh, fruit rich and charming, Primitivo is the godfather of southern Italian grape. And Palistro, Palast, Pil, Pilastro is a hit with all who try it. Made by, made for you by three time Vinitaly, Vinitaly winemaker the, um, of the year, Angelo Massi. Pilastro's pedigree boasts over 60 awards, including six gold medals. Uh, decanter judges called it the best release, a ver uh, the past release. A very nice drop, really tasty and superb value. The wine advocates Ma Monica Larner has said it offers great value and rich modern wines, wine style. Taste for yourself with the quality, with the equally impressive 2006 edition. So that was a 2006 wine. 2006? Wow. 2000, sorry, 16. 16, okay. I can't read. <laughs> Again, can't read. Uh, we got a Bordeaux. Oh. Or docks. I missed you. Yeah, because it's my job to mispronounce everything. Ew, red wine. No, red wine's the best. Who uh, said ew, red wine? <laughs> Why are you even here? We're going to drink some of this during the show, too. So No beer of the week this time. Okay. So we yeah. got... Ba -bum. We got Bordeaux is, a pr is priced by wine lovers and collectors the world over. One of the most famous names of all is Medoc's first growth, Chateau Montan Rothschild. But just Mont next door. Montan Mont Rochelle? What is sure. it? Can I see it? I don't know. It's French. I don't think it's actually French. I think it's Italian, but. It's a. It's oh, a... Rothschild. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, but just next door, Pascal's Pier Pinori's vine perch on the same gravelly ridge. In fact, her, under the radar, Chateau Tour de whatever uh, shares vineyards with Monton. She's even caught Monton harvesting accident harvesters accidentally taking grapes from her vines. Oh, 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 that's scandalous! There. Scandalous. We got oh, it is a French wine. I, I, oh, I didn't even notice it was French. It's French, Wait, it's a Bordeaux. Son of a... <laughs> <laughs> I should have known that by the fact that it was a Bordeaux, but I, I didn't. <laughs> Today the stakes are cool. Um, the stakes are color coded to avoid confusion. Oh, God. they they solved it. They had they had me on edge there about, about how they were gonna solve this problem. I thought it was gonna be like a Romeo and Juliet thing, like mm -hmm. years and years of uh, warring families, but they just colored the sticks. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, the yellow stakes are rock Milan's, and the blue ones belong to Moton, uh, as Pascal points out below. Uh, Pascal's been offered millions for her. Pr precious vineyards and she always refuses to sell which means very good things for insiders like you mm -hmm. our man on the ground john jean marx sabah i don't know french i think it's john john john, john. is it a john is it is it's it? not jean it's john i think it's john john john, <sighs> <Fucking> french. john <laughs> persuaded her to part ways with a small lot of her silky 2016 it's much anticipated to follow up to her gold medal 2015 release um, an 80-20 blend of Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. It has 12 months in French oak plus a dash of her fine um, Polique for extra complexity. Oh, that was a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, French. French are such a, a mouthful. Uh, Bordeaux really comes into its own with a meal. Think about putting it on Sunday dinner, pot roast, rack of lamb, oh. meaty stew with red wine base, oh. or even uh, vegetarian stews uh, will all be delicious. You could also serve with a selection of cheeses. Firm cheese like cheddar and uh, manchego work best. But uh, mild brie and uh, camembert would be tasty too. All right. Mm. Cool. Good beans. We have a lot of cool wines. Um, it is just rhetoric just kind of stumbling his way through, through trying to pretend like he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> um, he doesn't. Oh, same Bordeaux. Well, and then he pull it off. Uh, all right. Last one. Oh, I like this label. What a cool label. It's Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, Atovola? Atovola. Atovola? It's a, it's, a, it's a cool label. I like the label. Yeah, it's in California. Oh. I'm always, I'm always a sucker for good labels. I will say that one. Uh, drink like Hollywood royalty with this barrel-aged Cabernet from the Sonoma Estate of Academy Award winner and wine buff Francis Ford Cop Coppola. Ford Coppola. Who's Coppola. who's 
Who's Francis Ford Coppola? I don't know. Somebody He's Academy of Cover winning, so, you know, he must have done something. Uh, crafted by talented winemaker Corey Beck uh, with premium grapes from top sites in Monterey and Paso Robles. Um, mm. Atabula sports a history of gold medal acclaim thanks to its California uh, stellar 2016 vintage. This new release boasts serious fruit uh, ripeness and will be the star of your next Italian feast. Uh, if you would like to make an Italian feast with this, they recommend um, uh, Coppola Fernanda at their table viewers. Red, um, a red like this will be great with everything from salami and cheese to a hearty pasta and slow cooked meats. Mm. Mm, I'm getting hungry. Me too. Oh, gotta we go made eat a more. mistake. We made a mistake. <laughs> We should have bought some cheeses uh, and stuff for this. We should have. We have pepperoni. We do have pepperoni. Hey, remember and that, mozzarella. that mop charcuterie board we were uh, going to make? All right, let's get these over here, and we can pick the one that will be for today's Obviously, we're week. not doing a white, so... Yeah, we're, we're not, not doing a white. It needs to be chilled, and we just don't Whites are gross. A way to chill. Anyway. Whites are gross anyway. Oh, we have. I kind of want to do one of the NPR ones because they sound the tastiest. Do you not have this one up? That's a white. I don't want it near. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Get away from me. It's gross. Um, okay. All grapes considered? Okay. I kind of want to do all grapes considered. So, here are our options for wine of the week. Some good stuff. Um, do we get to choose? You do get to choose. Uh, do, sadly, the recommendations do not inclu include over which flat earther or anti vaxxer wine helps be pairs better. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it would be nice. We should do. I should do like a wine pairing for uh, for flat earther or anti vaxxer uh, videos. Um, so yeah, we can um, we can do this. Um, having a blast with badly speaks. <laughs> <laughs> having a blast with how badly he speaks anything but American English. Even American English is a fucking mess. So you know who knows. Um, Whites are delicious. That's a lie. <laughs> no, I agree with who, who said that. Awkward, awkward pasta. Awkward pasta. Yes, they they are good. <laughs> I'm just wine racist. That's all. Yeah, you are. I'm wine racist. Um, it just means more for me. Uh, so okay, uh, we get to pick the wine. I am I am tempted to go for the all grapes considered, um, but I will I will take any votes from anyone in here, um, as like as I try to fill the dead air. But anyone anyone in chat can help vote. Uh, my votes for all grapes considered, honestly. Um, but do you have a vote? Anybody voting? No, you have a vote. Oh me? Oh, um, I really don't. I'm just excited to try them all. <laughs> um, I haven't talked to my mom in like eight months until two weeks ago, and I found out she's an anti-vaxer again. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I feel like once again. you're an anti-vaxer, you're going to keep going again? back and forth. Uh, but that's probably just my emotions trying to come to a conclusion. That's sad. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, just drink one of the week, one of the week for anti-vaxxers and flat earthers bleach. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, pick, pick the NPR wine. Um, direct center bottle. I like to see if the label matches how much you enjoy it. Uh, this one? The La Tavola. That one actually sounds interesting too. That one's a, a California wine. So, um, so far it looks, it looks like the, the NPR ones are a little bit more, more popular. So these are the these are the th four NPR ones, which are the um, embedded, the weekend edition, uh, and the all grapes considered. This one isn't an NPR one. It's but it looks delicious. Um, so so far we have um, we have this one. This one's kind of winning out. The uh, what is it's just a cab. It is a cab. It's a cab. So that might be kind of good this afternoon. All grapes considered. We got to vote for all grapes considered too. I do like all grapes. It just it sounds amazing. We might have to we might have to have a. I'm gonna keep these. We might have to pick between or have Google pick between all grapes considered and um, the uh, this one, the one with the fun label, which I can't say the name of. Uh, Atavola, I think. So I think these right now seem to be the the two that are that are kind of winning out the um, this one and this one. So. Uh, La Tavola with a couple of uh, Capallo wine, Oscar winning, Oscar winning, so to say. But I meant if all the grapes are going to take all the grapes considered. All grapes considered? I think all grapes considered are going to win. So, all grapes considered is going to be today's wine of the week. 
Um, this week's wine of the week, I'm, I will maybe make a label for it. Um, but yeah, a lot of fun wines. This was fun. Got a lot of cool things to taste. I don't know where I'm going to put these. We literally have room for four bottles of wine in our kitchen. Um, I, this, I think that means we have to go shopping today. What do you think? Get a new, a new wine rack? Yes? Yes? No, it just means you have to drink faster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just remember... Or have some friends over. Or have some friends over. Uh, just remember, if you drink wine, you have to do it um, properly from real glass, not, <laughs> not a stein. It's, actually, we do, have, we do have not a stein, like, like my beer glass. I have to actually drink it from like a wine glass. But I am, I'm what, actually what a wine snob. I don't, I, think, I don't think they know that I drink wine because I don't drink, I usually drink beer. Do you think we're going to drink, just chug it from the bottle? No. Me, no, from a stein. What's a stein? Oh. Yeah. Oh, you mean one of those gigantic beer mugs. Mm-hmm. Ooh. No, that, that would be terrible. Uh, speech to text change grapes to groups. I like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I drink wine out of a mason jar. That sounds classy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Take the grind from the bottle. It's made out of glass anyway. It's fine. Yeah, Very it's true. Eclectic way to. It. It's a stemless wine glass. If you think about it. There you it. go. It's a stemless wine yeah. glass. We should. We should. We should make those. All right. So with that <laughs> said, I'm gonna. I still have to get things ready for the show. So we're gonna end things here. And um, show should be up in hopefully like another twenty minutes. So stick around, and we'll. We'll. We got some. Some fun options. I think. I think Paul and Morgan might be one of the options today. So we might have to. If you want to stick around, I'll talk about Paul and Morgan later hilariously creepy so all right with that said um have uh, have a good day rest of the day i'll see you all in about 20 minutes um and i'll see you yeah i'll see you guys next time